which is good. Okay, so so Nick, let's let's jump in on this. It's great to have everyone here uh, attending this. So so Nick, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in. Uh, in Hello, Jane. Good to see you. So we, we're asking Nick how how we got started in a, a very quick story. How we got started with with Moodle and Moodleization. Well. You know, Frank, years ago, I, uh, I used to use textbooks like everybody else, and I kind of got frustrated with the materials. And so I decided to start making my own materials through handouts and that sort of thing, get into the lab. And I didn't have a lot for my students to do, so I ended up making quizzes online, and eventually I ended up using Moodle. Um, the great thing about Moodle is that it's near, nearly universal, right? Every, every college has a Moodle system. Every university has a Moodle system. And the sooner students get used to using Moodle, um, the sooner they develop a kind of very important academic skill. Anyway, so I, uh, I soon discovered that, you know, with my quizzes uh, and assignments being collected online, I had a lot more time to give my students feedback and spend more time, you know, focused on my students' needs and less time playing catch up because part of my pedagogy was being uh, automated. And then, you know, ever since then, I've been working on trying to automate things a little bit more, you know, by giving automated feedback on writing, on grammatical errors, and eventually I'll get to more uh, tools for giving feedback on, on speaking. So, so, so Moodleization, the Labo Moodle, what is that specifically? What do we mean when we talk about Moodleization? Well, the idea, well, right now, because of the pandemic, um, a lot of teachers are suddenly finding themselves having to move their courses online. Now, the tools that are available seem to me woefully inadequate. You've got uh, Omnivox for some and allows students to drop things off and, and pick things up. You've got Zoom. Um, you've got uh, Google Docs, you've got uh, Teams, but I mean, look, all these tools are spread out all over the place and the student has to manage all of these different links and these different tools. The great thing about Moodle is that it will bring all these um, needs together into a single platform. And so Moodleization, the idea is to share the benefits of what you and I have discovered about Moodle with other teachers who are struggling to get their courses online to have a clear plan for, for the fall um, and maybe save their summer from the kind of toil that will be involved in setting things up and struggling at the last minute. So perhaps, you know, you and I can provide a, uh, a platform and the support to help teachers get online fast. Yeah, now I've used Moodle at my college, the Saint Laurent, and I have an excellent uh, pedagogical advisor there who's a specialist in Moodle. Now, why would a teacher want to use your Moodle and not the college Moodle that they already have? Well, I mean, look, I, I'm not telling, I'm not going to say anything negative about what the colleges are trying to do. They're doing their best. There's some great people um, and, and they do what they can. But I think it's kind of like uh, why you have the 407 in, in Ontario. You'll notice that if you go onto the toll road, there's a lot less traffic than there is on, on, the, uh, on the public highways. And when there is no barrier for access, uh, everybody rushes in, you get a traffic jam. So what we can provide is a controlled Moodle where uh, not everybody is welcome to join and uh, only just a, a few teachers. And therefore we can ensure that there'll be enough processing power, enough infrastructure to serve those teachers and their students really well. I mean, this has been our experience for our own students, whereas the click has been declaring, you know, slowdowns and problems and the Moodle that they provide, all the, the SEGEP network has been, you know, plagued with problems. We've had no problems at all. Students have had no barriers to access and everything's working smoothly. And that's because it's kind of, you know, um, just us and uh, our other friends, other teachers who are friends, right? We're using it so it so it has technical it's robust and it works now it's also unique uh my seizure moodle does not have your special linkedins regarding productive skills could you tell us about that well that's the other thing right because we've been you know you and i have been working with moodle for so many years we know what we're looking for and we know what we want in, in an esl 
focused Moodle. So I've been searching recently for some tools that I think are particularly useful. There's um, a dictation tool where the student listens to a sentence and types it out and gets feedback on their, you know, punctuation, capitalization, spelling, that sort of thing. And uh, a pronunciation app where they see a sentence, they read it, and then they get feedback on their pronunciation accuracy. Now look, this fall, when, when it comes time for us to go online, it's going to be rather a rather deliberate affair to get students to speak, right? I mean, sometimes it can be difficult in the classroom, but at least in the classroom you can say, okay, everybody, uh, take two minutes, turn to your partner and discuss your weekend. Uh, take two minutes and discuss the topic, right? You can just spontaneously announce uh, pair discussion. In the fall, I'm, I imagine, uh, you know, there are going to be times where you wonder if any students are listening at all, if they're watching us with the radio on. Um, so in the, by having some pronunciation, some speaking tasks on Moodle that are scored and tracked, we can ensure that students are getting some speaking practice in addition to like breakout rooms using Zoom and other things. Now, I like your writing, your automatic writing correctors that I've used, that I've researched with you, that you're piloted. So tell us a little bit about how the writing correctors can be so useful regarding, let's say, argumentative essays, persuasive essays, academic, literary essays. <laughs> you say that, and of course, we worked together on that, and we worked with uh, Diane, Diane Boisvert also. Boisvert, on, uh, opinion essay. But I also worked with Laurent Nicolas on a CV. Uh, system and the whole idea is that you know teachers uh, have the unique ability to give just the right feedback for the students level uh, when when they need it but it takes us quite a long time to do it, it takes us about two weeks sometimes to give a hundred to grade 150 essays and return them to our students so so my idea is to use the virtual writing tutor to look for certain features of essays um, that a machine can adequately detect like uh, vocabulary use, uh, errors, uh, strength of thesis statement, organization, things like this, and uh, try to give automatic feedback on those things. Now, in the fall, we're going to be struggling to keep up with the technology and with the new, the new way of delivering course content. So to have automated feedback on writing could allow us uh, to, you know, cope a whole lot better. So I've been working with my programmer in, in Kolkata, Raju, and we've developed a Moodle plugin where the student writes a text, submits it, the system sends it to the virtual writing tutor and comes back with lots of detailed feedback. Now, it cannot tell if the student has written total nonsense. You need a human for that. This takes a few hours, right, Nick? No, it takes two seconds. It takes two seconds in the system. And the student can then get ac access to some feedback on their organization and uh, vocabulary and grammar immediately. And then when the teacher comes along, they can verify the score and make sure that the system is performing as it should. It should speed things up. And we may find that we'll be able to give, because this is all new, right? We may find that we'll be able to give more feedback and get students to do more writing than we ever could before. Now, we'll see, but uh, it's ready It's ready for testing. Can you show us how easy it is to, to use the CGF Moodle, uh, Labo CGF Moodle site? Yeah, sure. So I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, what am I, I mean, zoom here. This is the click, I wanna show you the click. <laughs> Surcharge en cours, service technique avisé. Mais pourquoi, pourquoi en pleine période de correction et de cours d'été? There's some frustration out there. I thought I'd show that. Okay, um, so we're here. I'll just show you. This is uh, Labo d'Anglais. It's a new system that I've set up. I've been using uh, Labo d'Anglais using an older version of the Moodle, and I'm in the process of upgrading it, and that's why I can show you these new tools. Um, when you log into labodanglais.com, you have, you're presented with these books. I'll try Sejep English Moodle and scroll down to the course. Here's the course. And we can name this anything we want. Sejep English with your teacher. That's what I gave it. All right. Now, you can see um, this is the course that the students will see. And they'll see a series of buttons across the top. 
and each button relates to a different lesson. And I've put an attendance uh, activity here so the students have to indicate that they're there. Otherwise, we're gonna start off every one of our Zoom or Teams uh, meetings call, doing the roll call. It'd be just better if it were automated. And they have to indicate their attendance before they can access a Zoom lesson directly integrated into Moodle. Uh, notice it says restricted, not available, unless the activity attendance click to indicate your presence is marked as complete. I've got a dictation here. Listen and type the soup joke. Oh, it's not lunch yet, Nick. <laughs> it's, it's this activity that I've been doing for years with students. You'll notice with jokes, right? It's always told in the present simple. So it's a great way of starting uh, a course. A man walks into a diner, sits down, right? So you've got uh, two buttons. A man walks into a diner, right? And you can hear it full speed or you can hear it slow down. A man walks into a diner. Right, so you can do it like that. So, and you could say, you know, uh, comma, et cetera. A man walk into a dinner, right? And then when you click check, you've made 13 mistakes, not good enough, show the solution. And it shows what I got right and what I got wrong and what I'm missing. So I find this very useful uh, as a focus on form, getting students to listen carefully to the language and then uh, working on the mechanics of writing. We'll go back to the course. Sejep, English Moodle, topic one. Here. So a, a teacher would name the course, his or her course, if it would be, let's say, a, a 102 course in whatever, that it's a teacher customizable course. Yeah, yeah, it's all, everything's customizable. I'm just giving you, a, I'm just showing you some of the, the new features that I think teachers will find useful. So here, here, here it is again. This time it's a pronunciation activity. Um, and you just push to speak. A man walk into a diner, sit down at the counter and hoarder a bowl of soup. I don't have to press click again. Um, and it says that you have pronunciation errors. I, you can show the solution or I can just retry. A man walks into a diner, sits down at the counter and orders a bowl of soup. Oh, hold on. A man walks into a diner, sits down at the counter and orders a bowl of soup. Nick, may I ask you a question? Sure. Um, and I hear you're getting into the details of one specific uh, activity, but what, what I was wondering before I joined this, this meeting is um, uh, to begin, first, is, is Moodle free? Or is it a question is it a that, uh, to pay for? That's my next question to Nick. Is this a... Free service. It's a, it's a good question. Is Moodle free? Moodle, I'll show you Moodle. Because I went online, I, I looked it up, and I could see that there were a, a series of packages, like from a basic to more advanced, and each of them had a price. So I was wondering if it's, uh, yeah, that's where I... This is Moodle. All yeah. right, Moodle is an open source system uh, that's been cre created by a guy called Martin Dugiamis in Australia. Uh, you can download it and you can put it on a server. If you want, you can go ahead and do it today. It's free. Now, what's not free is the hosting. It has to be on a powerful machine uh, that is connected to the network, and that's called a server. So you have to install it on the server. You can't put it on a laptop. You access it through uh, a browser, through Chrome or Edge or whatever. <clears throat> so it's software that runs through a browser on a server. It's free in that regard. And that's why all the universities and all the colleges use Moodle. But what's not free is getting it to work or customizing it or uh, hosting it. Now, it's very resource intensive. When you have 35 students all at the same time clicking check my quiz, and it's checking you know, a 30 item quiz all at the same time, that server, I mean, it would crash your laptop. But the server is able to handle it because it's a very powerful machine and it costs hundreds of dollars a month to have a server like that. So it's free to download, but it costs to run. Institutionally free. Well, yeah, you can download it. So here's an instance of Moodle that I have installed on a server located in Nuns Island. Here you can see it's Moodle. That's the software, free software, but I pay uh, $450 a month for the server in order to serve uh, the, the students who use it. 
Okay, so you pay for it. The, the your college pays for it. Who pays for it? No, no, my college doesn't pay for it. My college has a Moodle, uh, and they 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 have technicians and they have their own server and they pay for that. But I don't use uh, Hunt Six Moodle, and it's for the reason that. It, because I think they pay to click. The click is this like Moodle provider uh, that serves the whole college network. And so if you have a Moodle on your college system, it's actually going to link through to the clicks Moodle server and they have an instance of Moodle for your college. And for that, the college pays about $12,000 a year. Now what's happened is teachers have been very slow uh, to, for, to get online with, with Moodle because it's a complex piece of software, right? And, um, and because of that, it's, uh, it's taken a long time. And then suddenly we have a pandemic. All the teachers are looking for an online solution. They all rush onto the click and the click crashes right when people need it the most, right? So uh, that's, that's the Moodle that's available through colleges. What I've done is I've contacted a hosting provider. It's called iWeb. And I've ordered a bare metal server with 16 cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And it cost me $435 a month. And you can do the math, it's whatever, $6,000 a year. And uh, it's a very powerful machine and it serves the, the teachers who use any of my textbooks, right? Active Engage Together on the job at college. Frank, a couple of years ago, joined I mean, he, he was uh, offering, you, Frank, you were offering courses uh, on Teachable and Kajabi and other, other platforms and decided to join efforts with me and use this Moodle system. Because so I had to pay for those other platforms. You had to pay. And so here's Frank's book, another one of Frank's books, three of Frank's books. And then we decided to create uh, an open course that any teacher could use to share what's working for us. Right. And so we pay, I pay, uh, but we collect through the sale of books. And if teachers are interested in using it, then we'll ask their students to make a contribution also. Go yes, ahead. Yes, Yeah, well, let's imagine that I have this one or two course that I've built myself and it revolves around a series of short stories at the beginning and, and some activities in comprehension and production that I have designed. Now I'm stuck at home and I'd like to teach this at a distance. And uh, I'm wondering, like here, can Moodle help me turn my uh, in-class activities that I had planned based on photocopies, on purchasing a book and all that, uh, but not a, a textbook, uh, a collection of short stories with my activities. I would like to make them available online with quizzes, with listenings and all that. Now, if I want to do this, I have to purchase my own private Moodle and run it myself, or is it something that... Um, this is the part that I do not understand. Like you're paying thousands of dollars a year to host your own thing, which is a, like your own business. You, you, you sell your own books. But as a private teacher, I want to turn my, uh, my, my traditional course on literature, for example, and I want to make it available online with interactive activities. Now, what do I have to do myself and how long, how much training would it take me and how much money would it take me to do this? Okay. okay, can I can I mention, can I you know, just mention that those are great questions, uh, Laurent. Uh, by the way, are these, are these uh, materials that you've created yourself? Uh, do you have, uh, in a sense, copyright on this? Yes, well, let's imagine, well, let, let's these? imagine a, a collection of short stories, which is not mine, but then the activities revolve around, like, dealing with them, the quizzes, that would be my creation, say. That's exactly. So, so what you would do is upload the stories. Many of them are probably 75 years old. So there's no, there's, they're, no, they're free. No, no, usually no, it's something they buy that's published recently. So. Okay. So you might have an issue with that because you, well, <laughs> but anyway, the, the point is you could get uh, your activities, your quizzes in the, the, the Labo Moodle very quickly. Okay. And, I, and, I, want to, I want to answer something first, if you don't mind, Frank. Hmm. So he's asking, can he set up his own Moodle? Yes, this is what you'll need to do. You'll need to find online hosting. You can do it, like uh, host a website. There's like HostGator, uh, there's GoDaddy. There are a bunch of services. You'll, you'll pay a certain amount each month. Um, they may ask you what kind of uh, 
you know, uh, how much processing power you need. Try to get as much as you can afford. Then you'll install Moodle. You'll have to download it and then upload it and then make sure that the server meets the, the criteria, make sure it's set up to use the right PHP version, that sort of thing. It's, it's all, you can, it'll take a while. It'll take you a, a while to learn the steps, but you'll be able to do it. You're not the first. Uh, then you'll install it. Then you'll probably want to choose a theme. Um, and then from there, you'll start uploading either the documents as uh, PDFs or as Word documents or convert them into web pages inside Moodle. And then you'll start building quizzes. And you'll have to set up categories uh, in the quiz bank and then set up the quiz questions and maybe you'll want to randomize them and then have them feed into a quiz. And then, um, and then you'll be ready to go. I mean, you may want to integrate other kinds of tools. You may want to put plugins into Moodle, like the kind of plugins I have, or you ask Frank and I to help you and we'll set you up with a course on lavodanglais.com and you know, it'll all be, it's all there ready for you to use and we'll just ask your students to make a contribution. Yeah, the students would pay for the service. They, they, it's your course. Yes, your, your copyright, you keep the- it's your course, your copyright, your materials, and the students would have to contribute. I mean, it, it, it's not for free. I mean, these sites I've used, I mean, I'm not a techie, so I've used things like Teachable, I've used Kajabi, I've used Udemy, well, Udemy is, is different, but these other sites, you really have to contribute and, and pay for that service. And I don't want to set up a, a, a site myself. I mean, that it's just taking away from my teaching. So that just complicates that. And look, Laurent, if you're interested in, uh, you know, officializing the course and making it available to other teachers, then you just join as a partner, the way that Frank has become uh, my partner. And he has his own materials. He sets up his own courses and people who use his books, um, have their students pay, and uh, Frank gets his share for, for the sales of his books to those students. And if that's something that interests you, I'm, I'm more than willing to help you get online and do that. The idea is to get, it's for Frank and I to help other teachers enjoy the kinds of benefits that we have discovered by, uh, you know, becoming self-publishers, essentially, right? And the students benefit. I mean, all I ever hear from students is how much they enjoyed the course and how much better it was than the last textbook that used because it really is bottom up. It's the teacher with the students doing what they know that the students that they have in front of them will enjoy and it seems to generalize well. It's the same as like Oxford saying, okay, here's the structure and this is what you will do and we'll hire a writer and, and it becomes rather top down. Uh, can I ask how much typically you ask your students to contribute? Good, yeah, question. So, Good question. Yeah, so with our books, so we have a book, right? And I'll show, see if I can show you a book. Here's an example of the book, right? This is the book that I use. You can see it's got a fair number of pages. We use Spiral Bound, allow students to you know, use it in the classroom. We can't do that anymore, but the, uh, well, we might be able to do it. And the point is it costs me $15 to print these, right? And then uh, there's the cost of running the server. So what I do is I uh, sell them to the various co-ops for $40 each. The co-op adds their markup, which is typically about $15. And then there's an additional uh, like, uh, you know, government taxes and the students end up paying like 60, $65 per book. So of that, there's about $25 that comes back to me that I can use for, to pay for my full-time developer. And there's a little bit of money left over for me to keep. And it's similar for, for Frank, the same sort of calculus. Now, if you were, if you had your own materials and you just needed the server, you could do that like 30, $25 really depends on what your students are willing to pay and how much support you need. If you're like a complete newbie, like you've never done Moodle before and you have no idea where to start, my guess is you'll need a fair amount of coaching. And if you have a lot of material, we'll, I have a technician in India who's willing to do the work for us. We'll hire him, we'll send him all the materials, he'll set up the course for you and you can enjoy your summer. 
uh, in which case we need a certain amount of uh, money, let's face it, to pay for, for the extra help. And then of course, Frank and I, willing as teachers, helping teachers, will help you and coach you through the semester because I'm sure you're gonna have questions and problems, right? That's, it's always the case. So it really depends on, on how much you want, but that's what we were thinking about, 30, $25 per student. That, that was where our starting point. That's I mean, are you, are you an expert user? I mean, how much coaching do you think you'll need, uh, Jane, if you were to use it? I have never been on Moodle before in my life, so I consider myself a newbie. <laughs> but I'm in the same boat as Laurent in the sense that we typically design our own material, you know, so in that, that end of it, we have a lot of prepared material exercises and everything like that. On the technological end of it, that's where, you know, no. it's totally new. And yeah. would you like to like have your own book and self publish and so you become like a partner with uh, Bokramu Publications and slap your name on a book and make it available to other teachers? Or is this just like your own course pack that you want to keep to yourself? Um, my own course pack. <laughs> No, I mean, that's, that's, that's legitimate. Setting up this course like a pilot, pilot, experimenting with it, and just having the distance version, which I'm doing. I'm developing two courses. I'm developing a, a course with a 103B, uh, Communication and Critical Thinking. And uh, so it's going to be online almost. And, uh, and I'll have my materials <laughs> in, in Moodle. So, and, I, and the advantage of doing that too, I guess, that you've probably used is that you put it out there for your own uh, students first, fine tune it, tweak it, and then um, with the feedback and the experience, it's something that you can put out there and publish. But exactly. the first step, but That's the first right. step is do you know creating the material using it yourself before you exactly get it. exactly <laughs> using it online because we we are in a sense forced. To work online and then perhaps in the in the winter session when things may come back to normal come up with a print version uh, the, the, and uh, we're lucky to have valerie here with us and valerie uh very early on started using my textbooks she wanted she wanted to give them a try to give them a try nick this isn't working nick i don't like this nick i want something else nick i like this do more of that she told me give me so much feedback that in fact has helped me improve my pedagogy and my teaching through the feedback from the teachers who use my materials and essentially collaborate in making them better. So it starts off as you, uh, you know, self-publishing and in a capacity of like a course back, but it ends up uh, getting so good that other teachers want to use it, right? So really, uh, I just see so many benefits here with the, uh, with the robustness of it. It works. It doesn't break down. I don't have to wait for the service at the CEGEP where I, at Saint Laurent, where there are going to be 200 teachers, uh, 300 teachers going to Moodle. So I can start now doing it. I have these unique plugins now, and I have the ability to, to get running up and running very quickly. So okay. it's... <laughs> just tell people... Who owns the copyrights on your textbook? I mean, I created the materials. I mean, uh, and I'm using all the stories, for example, that are copyright free. Yeah, so you use copyright free materials and anything else like you can. And I create the videos and I create the activities and I create the projects. Jane has used uh, family stories projects and I've created a debating project and now I'm working on a Teach, I'm working on a job search project that I'm going to be using in where we'll be using in the business course, Nick, with videos. And uh, certainly it's, uh, it's labor intensive. It's time consuming to do these original materials. But I mean, I enjoy doing it. So I record a seven, eight minute video, do some activities and then get it up there. And it's just for me, it's fun. Well, my point is that you've joined my publishing house, Broken Root Publications, but I don't claim any copyright on any of your material. It's yours. Your name is in the inside cover. You own the copyright. The point is that really what we're trying to do is something new. We're trying to collaborate with other teachers for the benefit of the students. And if there's a little bit of money to be made, that's great. 
um, but this is not a major kind of business operation. This really is just helping teachers for the benefit of students. So if other people are interested in joining in this, uh, I, think, uh, I think we can help them go from zero to hero really fast. Yeah. <laughs> go Valerie. ahead. Valerie. Uh, yeah, a uh, question for Nick, um, primarily because going forward to fall, you're saying, because students can get a textbook through the co-op. Co-op is, is delivering textbooks. And, but if I know that when things hit the fan in March, you did PDFs of all the pages and so forth. Now, if you're not selling that, if we're not obliging to students to buy that textbook through the co-op and everything is going to be on your website, that's a loss of revenue, is it not for you, Nick? Or are you going to charge them the same amount of money for access to the website that you charge them for that textbook? Well, okay, so there you go, there's the question. I'm not sure, I mean, I'll be honest, just a person trying to figure it all out like everybody else. And so uh, what I've heard from the co-op is that they will be selling books, and yeah. my plan is if I can sell, you know, a hard copy book, I want students to have a book. Yeah. So I will get whatever, 700 copies printed as usual, delivered to the co-ops as usual. The students will pay with their credit cards to the co-ops as usual, and then come by and pick up their tote bags with their names on them. Um, yeah. It will be a little different. Uh, I guess I could offer, you know, a non-textbook version where it's like PDFs only, and then the students would simply pay directly on the Moodle website using a credit card. I, I could do that. It would, uh, it would save me a lot of running around because delivery takes time, as you can imagine. I have to drive down to Zone Libre for uh, O'Sullivan, and I drive around a lot to do the deliveries. But um, I guess I could provide a, a discount, or I could take the money and put it into more online infrastructure. I'm, um. Another question Tell me. For, for your textbook, like, uh, and I was going to call you and add, talk, have a conversation with you about that, but the card games, ah. have you figured out anything how to do that online? I, I, I've sort of thought about it a bit, but because they, they're kind of critical and, and I, you know, to finish the semester, I, I just wasn't doing any more of them because I couldn't wrap my mind around how I was going to get my students to do them. Funny you should mention that. I'm saying and everything, you know? Funny you should mention that. Yesterday, I was in touch with the technician that I just, okay, so I have a programmer, his name is Raju Rana, and he works, uh, he works, he works at a distance in Kolkata, and he, um, he has a cousin who recently came out of work, lost his job because of COVID, and is looking for work. So I said, look, uh, I'll hire you on, you can help me adapt my offline courses online. So one of the things I asked him yesterday to do is to take the card uh, games that are in Frank's book. He's got one on grammatical terms. The other one is on literary terms. And I sent him the PDFs and he will copy the clue and the answer onto an Excel. And I asked Raju Rana, his, his cousin, to write a JavaScript so that you click a button, it shows you a virtual card you ask the question, only you can see it, and then you Zoom to have the conversation in a breakout room. So technology is coming along. There's an added expense, but uh, we can do it. I'm, I'm quite sure we have the, the wherewithal. Uh, playing Go Fish is going to be difficult, though. <laughs> I don't know. It could take some more time and, and money, but the guessing games we can do. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, that sounds, that sounds good. So... Uh, it's relatively easy, as you sh showed, Nick, to get stuff up and running now. With the material. I don't know about easy. Look, it's, yes, it's feasible. It's completely feasible. feasible. We've, got the, we've got technicians available. Uh, we've got a programmer who works full time. And you and I can provide the help uh, if need be. It's not, it's not a problem. Um, yeah, it's completely doable. But I think we need to get started soon, Frank. I think we should yeah. have, if those people who want to join, they should let us know in, you know, early June. 
and then get the material to us as soon as possible and then we get the people working on it so that you know it doesn't september doesn't come along and oh, nick it doesn't work no yeah it's, it has to work i mean we can't we can't go forward unless you know it's clear we have a clear plan and things work exactly and that's for the online version specifically there's, there's <laughs> We got a little question. Uh, some colleges, I understand, are using their own Moodle, like an institutional Moodle, right? We don't. At, at Grasset, for example, we don't. So we're completely new and ignorant about this, I think. Personally, I am. I was kind of looking forward to learning about how, how to use a, a new online tool, but my question is this. What would be the advantage for a teacher whose college has Moodle not uh, to, like to go with your venture instead of just using that tool that is paid for and and offered and run by the college besides just having a, a freer highway like as you talked about this highway being yeah. faster but let's say that your teacher you're not a business let's say that person is not a business person trying to launch a product but just trying to run activities at a distance that he or she has created herself the college is running moodle that person can use it. Why not use that? Well, I, I meant, can I mention that, Nick? Because I've, I've used the college Moodle for several years, and now I've switched to, to Labo Moodle. And number one, the Labo Moodle is, is robust. It works. And as Nick mentioned, when there are 30 people on it, it doesn't, it doesn't break down. And sometimes the college Moodle will break down. Number two is technical support is almost instantaneous. And at the college, it is not instantaneous. And uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, they're wonderful people, but they just can't cope. And they will not be able to cope with the number of people who are coming online. So you have the almost instantaneous technical support. And everyone I've talked to who's used the Labo Moodle is satisfied 100% with the technical support. Number three is that you have these unique plugins that are not available on the college Moodle. So, and it's available right now. And your college Moodle will not be available probably until August when the people come back. August 15th, I think is when the people start gearing up for the fall term. So those are a number of benefits that are really appealing to me. <laughs> Imagine this, you decide you wanna add an activity or you decide you wanna drop an activity. So you're, grade book needs changing. You're not quite sure how to do it. You send a quick little email to Asit, um, our technician. You go to bed, the next morning you wake up because he's on the other side of the planet. The job is done. It's done for you, right? So that's possible when you have a team of people focused entirely upon like the success of this, you know, this project. Um, and, and when they're working, you know, at a distance. Uh, when you have a a college, you know, you're using the college Moodle or DeClick or some other kind of provider, you get into a, a line and you wait your turn. And often it's good enough and uh, students are, you know, can wait for a solution for a week. But um, we can turn things around much faster. That's the truth of it. And that's, that's what we want. We ultimately, what we really care about is walking into the classroom virtually or or whatever, and just having a completely successful lesson every single time. And uh, it seems having, you know, a little commercial venture has made that possible uh, and reliable and, and sustainable. Yeah, and as Jay, as Jay mentioned, none of us, apart from you, Nick, are very technically competent here. So I, I have to say, if I, if I have a problem with the Labo Moodle, I'll just call Nick and he's almost virtually available <laughs> on the call. And it'll it'll so be solved now. <laughs> and it's solved, but it's which, really which, like that, you know. Which is so valuable when students question the robustness of a site. This doesn't work, and why not? And I've had to send students home on a number of occasions because the college Moodle didn't come up. It didn't work. There were too many people on the server. And imagine in the fall, it's going to be compounded. It's going to be it's going to be difficult. As I say, the pedagogical people are, are wonderful, but even then you got to wait in line for pedagogical support. So here we're, we're offering to collaborate and to share and to be helpful if, uh, if there's a need for it. Right. And look, you and Jane work at the same place, right? So you can literally, you know, uh, just uh, call on each other for, you know, little hints and helps and uh, this is what I want to do. Oh yeah, I did that too. 
I mean, this is what we do, Frank and I. Oh, I have an idea. I want to do this. Oh, yeah, this is how I did it. It really is a, a, a very fruitful collaboration. I would suspect the students at the Grasse are um, technically competent, if I, <laughs> probably more than we are. Are they? Hey, Laurent. Uh, Grasse are... students? Uh, not more than others, I think. Uh, and you'd be surprised. If you don't make things very clear and simple, everybody takes the first door out. I don't know how this works. I'm not doing it. I mean, I, this is a universal reaction. It doesn't matter what college you come from, I think. Okay. But I, I've been, as I say, Mo using Moodle for you know, seven, eight years now. And over the years, I'm just amazed at the how students are getting quicker and better and faster and mastering the technology. And I'll make mistakes with tabs very often. I I'll open up a number and a student will come up and say, sir, you have too many tabs open. <laughs> or I'll ask Jean-Pierre, help me out here. I can't get the sound to work. So students at the Miss Saint Laurent are really technically competent and they, they, don't, have a, they, don't, they don't have a problem with the Moodle or, or uh, Rio or with uh, Ray. Right, there's, there's a question in the chat from Susan Meyer. Is it possible to make listening and speaking tasks, uh, listening and reading tasks, absolutely. In fact, we have a bunch of them that we can share. Uh, what you do is you set up a quiz, uh, you add an MP3 or other or YouTube video if you prefer, some sort of video, and then you add a series of questions. Uh, that's your listening task. For reading, similarly, you can provide the reading text, either as a PDF and a link or the text itself, and then a series of questions underneath. Um, it's, uh, it's what we do with our students all the time, right? Yeah. And what I love about the reading and the listening tests on Moodle is I give my students 10 reading, right? You've got 10 that you have to do, but only five count. So in this way, a student gets a low score for whatever reason. They don't get discouraged, they just keep working. And then when they hit the 60 or the 70, whatever the score they want, those that are, I don't know, oversubscribed, working too hard, they just say, okay, good enough, I'll stop. And those people who want the extra practice and are eager for 95, 98, they just keep working. And so this mastery model is available through Moodle that, that just if a teacher were to offer it, right, they would just be so bogged down with corrections, it, they would exhaust themselves. They wouldn't be able to do it. Um, and so Moodle offers all kinds of opportunities to improve pedagogy through this mastery model of you know, here's 10, I'll take the best five, or whatever your calculus is. Good, so we're at 45 minutes, that's uh, long enough. <laughs> any, do we have any other questions, Valerie? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I'm just concerned, uh, come fall, I, uh, you know, I, I use Nick's um, textbooks, his website all the time, and I, how, how much, and I know I'll have a lot of conversations with him um, how, how we're going to adapt this because I know finishing the semester, um, my class, well, first of all, students didn't show up, so they weren't, and my classes got smaller and smaller, and the motivation wasn't there. But I certainly would be looking forward to, uh, instead of a class being shrunk down to 45 minutes an hour because... I just can't do stuff online. That was my big concern. And I know that I work with Nick and overcome all these, these issues. And as, as a person who's used Nick's website and his textbooks for the last, I think it's been like five, six years now, Nick. Um, you know, I call Nick, there's a little problem with a video or something, it's fixed pronto, pronto. I have rarely ever had a very long wait for anything. <laughs> and I mean, I'm a huge fan. So you're, you're talking to the converted here. That's okay. Uh, Susan asked about plugins. We mentioned a couple of plugins, particularly for listening, for writing and for speaking. Kind of the long, long question. How do I, where do I move this? So I'm trying to move this out of the way here. Ah, oh, there we go. Share screen. Okay, so the plugins, I mean, how many, how can I explain? Um, I'll just try to show you what I have here. Um, you know, I haven't set up instances for all of them, but I can show you how easy it is to add. You click turn editing on, there it is. 
uh, once the editing is on, you all you there we go. Uh, you add an activity or a resource. You can put it anywhere you want. So let's say right here, add an activity or a resource. And then here you go. You've got assignment, attendance, chat, which is real time chatting. But you've got that in Zoom. Choice. They have to choose one thing or the other. Let's say you've got two topics and you want to ask which one the students want to, to deal with. And of course, database, they fill in a chart, they fill in uh, some fields, collect some information. Uh, external tool is if it's something else that's for connecting to other services. Fast assignment. Now this is the plugin that uh, just recently developed. We're offering it on Moodle for free. And the way it works is you can click on it and add very simply um, an essay writing task. The students write their essay, click auto evaluate and they get the score immediately as formative evaluation or uh, you can hide that button and then the teacher has it and they can uh, score essays in two seconds. So that's that's new and that's only on this Moodle at the moment. Feedback is to find out how you're doing, ask students to give their opinion on, on the lesson, that sort of thing. Forum is for asking questions asynchronously. Glossary, uh, you can get students to add words from their field of study and definitions and build like a communal glossary. Interactive content, that's what I used for the uh, dictation and pronunciation task. It's called H5P. Um, a lesson, a lesson is a series of uh, slides basically. A quiz, quizzes are your online tests, right? That's just, so you can do multiple choice, you can fill in the blank, short essay. I've even got an automated essay evaluation plugin for the, the quiz where uh, the student writes a short essay of some sort and it checks for certain words. Let's say the words target structures from your lesson and then checks for the number of errors using the virtual writing tutor. So this is uh, one of the plugins, yeah. These are plugins that you have created or that you asked your programmers to, to, to create so that you could integrate them into your system or they're available from a list? So, okay, so Moodle has a repository and you can, down, so many of these are standard, but uh, this, for instance, you have to download and install. Um, sometimes system, Moodle system administrators are loath to install too many plugins. Um, because it takes a long time to test them, make sure that they don't interfere with each other. But I was able to install this one and it seems to be working very well. This is H5P. I don't know if other Moodles have it. Uh, lesson quiz, SCORM survey, wiki, you can have them collaborate in writing, you know, wiki documents and uh, correct each other. And here, I was able to integrate this. This actually was quite difficult. You have to create an API on an application programming interface on zoom.us. But now I can add a Zoom meeting, like it's so easy to do and integrate it, right? You just say, you know, Monday at three. I don't even have to describe it. There it is, recurring every save and return to the course. And there it is, there's my Zoom meeting, it's done. So easy. And the student's like, oh, where's the link to the Zoom? I send it by mail or uh, it's in the email. No, it's all together in Moodle right here. And the college won't offer this. They'll offer Zoom through Leia. So now they have to go into Leia to get to the Zoom and then to Moodle to get to the quizzes. And it's everywhere. But um, here it's focused and you can put it in order. And as you notice at the top here, they can't do the Zoom meeting unless they've indicated that they're present in the course first. So this is going to simplify things for teaching online. Now you know who's attending. Well, these are all new improvements to the old Moodle. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like, think of it like a curated collection of uh, tools, right? So, you know, uh, one guy, he's into building boats. He has a certain kind of set of tools. Another person is into building birdhouses. You've got a different set of tools. Well, you know, like depending on your needs, you will have your own collection. Well, this Labo has its collection that's focused on, on the needs of ESL teachers. So they're all here. They're easy to add. Book, file, folder, label, page, and a URL. It's, it's all here. It's easy to add. And I should just note, that here at the top of the page, right? I've maybe mentioned this, we've got a sharing cart. So teachers are able to share content with each other. And it's so easy. Let's say there's a PDF you like 
like Frank's uh, lesson, lesson one, you click copy to course, scroll down, and uh, oh yeah, I want to put it here. And now you have Frank's, you know, lesson one in PDF has been added to your course. It's, it's so easy to use this when everybody is uh, supporting each other. Right. Anyway, that, that's my answer. Anyway, it's time is running on. Uh, if there are no more questions, uh, I want to thank you for attending and um, the recording will be available if you'd like to go back and listen to it. And uh, if you have questions, so feel free to write or call Nick or myself and we're happy to talk to you. Frank, I have a question. Yeah. So who's ready? Who's, who's interested in trying this out? I mean, we... Um... Well, I, I have to say, I, I love the fact, and this is a huge selling point, and that is that everything is available on one platform. And of course, that's a huge plus. Um, the deterrent for me at this stage is thinking in terms of the cost of it. Um, whereas, you know, in, in my mind, I was going to ask you this, I assume the answer was obviously no. Um, had you ever put forward to a Hansik to see whether they could get some funds for your department to um, help you uh, cover the costs of this? Um, the truth is, yeah, so I've spoken to Ahansik and there's always a question of, well, ask your department, the department can go through EMO, they can make a special request, or you can go through Entente Canada and try to get some funding. I mean, there's always like a process to go through. And I'm just, I've been honestly just fed up with waiting for somebody else to give me permission to do what I think is best for my student. So I just slap a, a price tag on. They're going to buy a book anyway, whether it's from Pearson, Irpy, or whatever. They're going to buy something. So I figure, okay, instead of like sending that money off to the shareholders who own these large corporations, let's plow it back in. We'll hire talent uh, and we'll, we'll try to use it to serve our students better. I mean, that's been my, my view. So if the price is too high, then the question is, what do you think your students be, would be willing to pay? Because um, the truth is, you know, probably we can be flexible, but you know, the less money that, that we collect, the less that's available to build the resources and to serve the student. So we want to have it as high as possible so that we can provide the students the best service, right? Not to say, I'm sorry, you know, we've run out of hours from the technician, you know, we run out of cash, I can't lose money, my wife would kill me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's justifiable from your end, absolutely. Uh, I can see that. It's just, you know, we're coming from, um, we our, our school, the tuition is quite a lot higher than it is at uh, Hunsik. So, you, Hunsik. So we've got already um, let perhaps fewer demands on the students in terms of forking out even more money and you know textbooks can be expensive it's you know but uh, but there's that issue so a lot of a lot of um, issues to consider I think in in my case um, but I find it very interesting just the the idea of having everything on one platform the plugins the, the you know there's so many aspects of it that I love well here's an idea right I mean look um, just because of the shift in platform you know for, from teaching in person to teaching online, you know, we'll need a little bit extra money in order to hire the technicians to get the work done for you, right? But then next semester, we can bring that price down, right? So if you want to continue, of course, you keep all your copyright, you take it, you put on any Moodle you want. But if you continue, then we can, you know, get the price lower and lower as you need less and less support. Right? I mean, that's entirely possible. So you just tell us how much support you need and we'll calculate, you know, what we can offer based on the number of students you bring and uh, how much they're willing to pay. But when students say to me, you know, I don't, oh, sir, it's so much, you know, it's hard. I, you know, I have the cell phone and a car to pay for, and now I have to pay 50 bucks for a book. And I say, I paid thousands and thousands of dollars for my education. You have to make your contribution and it's your, you know, show your commitment. And I recognize your college is already taking a lot from from the parents' pocket, but they need to they need to make a contribution to the materials also. So tell me, Jane, what do you think the students would be willing to pay? Well, they 
you know, are this the textbooks, as you know, from the major publishing companies are, you know, 50 to $60 on average, depending on how many f other features you're adding. Uh, so it's comparable. But then if you were talking about 65 to $70, there is no way, you know, they have to buy a novel on top of that and they have to buy a course pack of photocopies and, and that kind of thing, which of course that could go online. You know, there's, those things are flexible, but I'll, I'll, it's just, a, I don't know. I, I, I think you misunderstood. When they buy my book, right, they end up paying 60 bucks from the co-op. But if you're not asking them to buy a book, then it would just be the platform, just the Moodle. So I think like 30 bucks, $25 possibly, it really depends on how much support you need. But look, if you have, if you have 100 students, right, and they're each paying $30, that's $3,000. We can get you a lot of support and we can ensure the resources are there to make sure that your course is delivered smoothly. We'll add extra processors, extra cores, that sort of thing, $3,000. Um, you know, if you would prefer to make it like $20, well, that's $2,000. And well, we can, we can see what we can do with that. Uh, it's, uh, it's really up to you because, I mean, 10 is like would co cover our costs. There'd be like, you know, $1,000 is about how much it costs me. So I couldn't go lower than 10. No, but for sure. Flexible. For sure. But the, uh, the idea of the textbook is uh, something that in my class, I like them to have the physical textbook, whether the course be online or not. Mm -hmm. They still need that physical textbook, in my view. Which textbook would they want? Which te textbook are you talking about, though? I'm talking about your ser you, you, you and Frank's, your series of books factored into the price. Yeah. Okay. okay, so understand that the book comes with the website, right? I mean, that's the way that works. There's no additional cost. I mean, we, the students pay 60 bucks for, for, for the book and they get the website. It's not a problem. That's, that's the package, right? right? But we're not asking for additional money on top of the cost of the book. No. I mean, d did you think that it was 60 bucks plus? Or are you concerned about the cost of the textbook being 60 bucks is too much? Uh, no, but you're talking about the, the cost of the Moodle on top of the no, textbook. No, no, the Moodle is included with, the, with each of the textbooks. So that's what it says on the front of each book. It says one fee, $30 for level. <laughs> Purchase of this book also includes one session of access to the online companion website. Right? I mean, that's, that's how it works. We sell the book and the access together. And the total cost of the students is about 60 bucks after the co-op takes their cut, cut and the government adds their taxes. Right. I ultimately collect $40 per copy of which $15 is the printing fee. And there's $25, which I hold in reserve for development and for the, the, the website. Okay, coverage. got that. But then on top of that, we're, you're asking, you're, not you're asking, but we would have to pay for the Moodle out of our pockets. No, 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 no. I'm trying to say that this, okay. He, he, I'm offering two scenarios here. You want to use one of, you want to use Frank's textbook? Great. Uh, students will buy the book. We'll, you know, you'll order the book. Tell us how many copies. We'll print it up. We'll send it to the, the co-op or whatever you have, the bookstore there. And that's it. They'll pay one fee, 60 bucks. You have full access to the whole website and all the activities that Frank has developed. Right? That's how that would work. But let's say you say, no, I want to use my own materials. No textbook, no Frank's book, no Nick's book, nothing like that. I just want the online and I'm going to use my own materials. Great. Good. We'll open the website to you. You can bring your materials. We'll get a technician to help you set it up and uh, we'll collect money from the students directly using their credit card. And I'm suggesting $30 per student. And that would collect about, if you have 100 students, about $3,000, and we can hire a technician to moodleize every aspect of your offline course to make it online. So the students would only pay 30 bucks, and if you have a novel on the side, they, they would buy that separately. So that's, that's my idea. It's like, you just want the platform? Well, we can help you with that. You want one of our textbooks? Well, the books come with the plat platform together. Okay, I see people have to go. Laura has to go. I have to go. You have to go. We have other stuff to do. So thank you. If there are no more questions, uh, we appreciate your listening to this uh, offer of help 
to teachers and uh, offer well, more options. Yes, offer options. That's so, so important. The more options you have, the better. Thanks yes. for attending. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oops, stop recording. <laughs>